Hey, something else I uh, should have mentioned, I meant to mention it when I was talking about how to graph a polar function. You can use your calculator for this. So you go to mode, right? And then you click polar. You have a function that's regular, parametric. We just did polar. There we go. You go in here and you see a, a polar function. Okay, and I, I think watching the calculator draw this graph is a helpful thing to see. It's definitely how I imagine uh, it looking. Um, uh, I imagine the you know sweeping through all the angles from zero up to whatever. Um, it helps me imagine how the graph is being drawn. Um, so let's watch the graph draw it. I did this on purpose because if you do it and you don't realize what's going on, um, you might say, "Where's my graph?" But remember, this this guy that we drew is like between zero and one. It's teeny. It's right there. So you gotta uh, zoom in on it. Um, you can see where it kind of is. So we can do a zoom box, and you can draw a box around it, and it'll zoom in on those coordinates. All right, so there we go. Now it doesn't look like a circle, so we might go zoom uh, square. Okay, so watch it draw it. Look how it's still thinking. Still thinking. Why is it? It looked like the graph was done. Why was it thinking so hard? Um, now keep in mind this is a, a function of theta. So you, you, I mean, as any as many angles as you can think of, you can plot that many points, right? We could go up to thirty-five thousand pi and just keep plotting these. But you saw just from one kind of cycle, just through half of the unit circle, the whole circle was drawn, right? Just going from zero to pi drew the whole graph. Okay, so um, let's just see that again. Maybe if we do this, it'll, there we go. Draws the whole thing, and then it's done. It only needs to go through a single pi. Watch it, um, I'll slow it down by, um, what am I looking for here? I think table setup. Uh, no, window, this is what I want. Okay. Um, I'll make the step really small. Let's see if uh, this will slow it down much. Okay, yeah, slow it down a lot. So watch it as it as it graphs, right? Now we're at like a pi over four. Now it's close to an angle of pi over three. Now it's getting to a pi over two, crossing over here to two pi over three. It's drawing at about an angle of two pi over three, and now at pi over four, and at five pi over six, right? And then pi, and once it gets to pi, it's done, right? At pi, it had those negative uh, radii, and it was drawing those negative values but it's still drawing because it's 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 going past pi it's going to uh to three pi and are all the way around to two pi and it's just really not necessary for it to do that okay um, but if you watch it sweeping through all of the angles then if you can follow what's going on follow that we have a positive radius here and then we switch over here we get the negative and then once it's done you know um how much of the how many of the angles it needs to go through. So if you go over here, and let's change this back to like 0.1, something like that. Um, and then we go, look at these here. It goes through, the, the first angle that it graphs is at uh, theta, uh, is zero. And then it goes to theta is what? 6.28, that's twice pi, right? 3.14 times two would be 6.28. So we could just come over here. If we know that it just needs to go through pi, we can enter pi. Just go from zero to pi radians. Um, this step is how tiny is the, is, is the increment? Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. Not sure what I was saying there exactly, but um, I think I was talking about the step here. Um, this determines how small of a, a step it makes on the angle. Right, I went from pi over 6 to pi over 4 to pi over 3 uh, to pi over 2, and I found those points. So you tell it how small of an angle to, to uh, input to the function, find the radius, and then plot that point and connect, right? We can make this step pretty big. We can make this step um, just pi over 4. And now our graph will look quite wrong. Right. So it's only going to go to uh, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, and so on. Um, and it's not going to look very good. Right? So it went to 0, pi over 4, pi over 2 had a radius of 0. Uh, 3 pi over 4 had a radius of negative 1, uh, or negative uh, root 2 over 2, and at uh, pi we had a radius of negative 1. So, and, you know, you get the idea of what a step is, I think. So we'll make the step kind of small, but not too small. You saw what I did, it slowed it way down when I made it too small. Um, and then the x minimum, you know, that's the x-axis from, uh, from negative.
negative, it looks like 1.4 to positive 2 point, almost 2.5. Um, and yeah, so there you go. All right, so um, I, I hope that was helpful. Sorry I didn't put that in the original video, but uh, when you put that in the calculator and you let it trace it out, you it really starts to help your mind imagine um, basically how uh, many radians you have to go through to get the full shape. Okay, you have to go through pi, you have to do quarter pi, you have to go through three pi, what will give you that full shape? All right, that's it, thanks.